Joe Mixon's prop set at just 47 and a half yards. Jamar Chase separated shoulder. Steelers have given up 68 or more yards to four running backs in the last three games. 16 running backs have hit this number against them this year. Like, are you worried about the last two performances for Joe Mixon? Eight for 16 in the first games against Pitt? Or do you like him to, to hit this prop here? No, I like him to hit this prop. I, I think the Steelers just in general have kind of sort of given up on the season. And and again, you, you take a look at some of the effort level across the board. Uh, the, the vibes are all wrong in the Steel City, man. I think Pittsburgh has literally given up uh, on the season. So, yeah, I really like... Uh, Cincinnati to kind of sort of come through um, and do their thing this week. And and what they're going to do, again, with no Jamar Chase, they have to lean on the run game. I know they're going to throw a requisite number of bomb shots over to T. Higgins, but I think the the the, the staple of the, this offense has to kind of be short and underneath. Uh, what I've been really impressed by, actually, uh, with the Cincinnati coaching staff is their a, a ability to kind of sort of adapt on the fly and change their game plan to the personnel that they have. Uh, and they've been really good at that this year I think they do that again against Pittsburgh I think they jump out to a nice comfortable I mean even a nine point even a seven eight point lead against Pittsburgh feels really comfortable with the way their offense is performing right now I think Mason Rudolph I don't do the fans there in Pittsburgh have like collective like a Mandela effect there in Pittsburgh like what's going on did you guys not see Mason Rudolph before he stinks He's absolutely awful. Why are they calling for Mason Rudolph to come back in? It's gonna be it's gonna be a train wreck. Uh, it's gonna be an absolute dumpster fire offensively for Pittsburgh. I honestly, honestly, I really think that Cincinnati needs to score about thirteen points to win this game. I like Garrett Wilson a lot. Uh, again, when we take a look at his numbers across the board, it's just, look, you talk about a slump buster. It's funny, right? Because it's the Jets pass offense versus the commander's pass defense. I call this a toddler pillow fight. Man, this is, it's the worst <laughs> versus the worst. I mean, there, there can't be a softer matchup going up against each other, man. It's like, it's like two cooked noodles just slapping into each other here. It's absolutely <laughs> terrible. And, but again, when we take a look at this, though, I get, I get excited about these kind of down and dirty matchups, man, because something crazy is going to happen. And I do really like Garrett Wilson, uh, to pop off in this matchup. Meanwhile, on the other side, uh, again, I thought we found a little something with Jacoby Brissett, but Washington seems really hesitant to go in that direction for some reason. And as a result, I think Terry McLaurin uh, might get locked up here by the Jets. You know, the Jets have allowed the fewest receptions and yards to outside wide receivers over the last eight weeks. This despite the fact that they got lit up by Jalen Waddle last week, right? So they have been incredibly good. McLaurin's line of 51 and a half um, this week looks low. But sadly, I think I'll take the under there. He's been under 51 and a half receiving yards in four of his last five games. Ooh-wee. I want to talk about this Lions-Vikings game. You've got TJ Hawkinson sort of in a revenge spot. Sam Laporta, who has just become the best rookie tight end that I've seen in a long time. Just a very fun matchup. I saw the Vikings blitzing at a higher rate than anyone else in the NFL right now. How yep. does their defense impact the props to you for the Lions? And, and like, where does that funnel to? Yeah, so the Lions, again, have been a, a relatively soft pass defense. But I think on the ground, they've been really, really tough, right? So you take a look at the uh, Detroit Lions against the run, and, and, and they're – you know, top 10, top three, as a matter of fact, in yards per carry allowed to running backs over the last eight weeks. They're top 10 in yards after carry. Uh, they're top 10 in yards before contact as well. So a really tough rush defense do the Lions have. But again, I think on when we're talking about some of the, you know, a little bit more no name, you know, uh, secondary players they've got over there in Detroit. I won't go so far as to say they're Kirkland brand. OK, but they're a little bit more no name uh, dudes there in Detroit. And uh, and yeah, uh, you know, I, I think that's where you want to attack if you're Minnesota. And quite frankly, I don't think Mullins looked terrible in that game. I don't, I didn't, I didn't love him there either. But he does have a really good complement uh, of pass catchers to get that passing game moving. And if Detroit is funneling you that way, I do like the player props for some of the receivers there on Minnesota's side. What about on the Lions side? You talk about Jared Goff being a little bit shaky on the road. This one's indoors, though. Like, what players for the Lions do you like? Um, again, I would like Jamison Williams if he just wasn't 
such a project. <laughs> I think Minnesota has been getting burned by outside wide receivers. Uh, and again, we just saw T. Higgins go off on these guys, right? Two touchdowns scored for T. Higgins, eight targets, four grams, and 61 yards. Um, so again, I would I want to lean somewhere there on the outside, you know, whether we're talking about Reynolds or JMO there, but you know, the offense, you know where it's going. You know, it, it's gonna be it's it, it's gonna be Amon Ross St. Brown, right? You know it's gonna be Sam Laporta, and basically Jim. Jared Goff has a, a, a real trouble kind of throwing outside the numbers. That's why those guys, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta, have been doing well because they work on the inner, uh, the intermediate Gibbs and middle well. part of the fields. Yeah, exactly. Gibbs, too. So, yeah, I, I like those players because, again, Detroit doesn't really give you a lot of sleepers. You know, you know what you're going to get with those guys. I, look, I agree. I like what Baltimore's doing. Do I think that they are separated from the rest of the AFC? No, I'm not really ready to go that far. Like, I know everybody wants to kind of poo-poo the Dolphins because they've lost all the games against good teams, but I, I think that's, you know, they figure it out. Whatever it is, that bugaboo that's holding them back, I think Miami is in that mix. At the end of the day, I'm not writing Kansas City off until they're dead, right? Like, until they are staked through the chest and buried deep, I'm not stopping giving up on Kansas City at this point. I don't think Baltimore has done in the AFC what San Francisco's done in the NFC. Now, I would be very interested uh, in one more crack at a Dallas-San Francisco matchup down the line if Dallas doesn't fall apart, and we know they have the capability of doing it in the big game. I'm still not ready to crown Dak Prescott league MVP like a lot of people have been trying Cody Decker to get me to do for the past <laughs> Don't tell him I said that because I'm off on Saturday and he'll see Matt, he'll say nice things about me. Uh, but no, I, I listen. I think San Francisco has absolutely separated themselves not from the NFC but from the NFL as a whole. If Baltimore knocks off San Francisco, I think it will be time to go ahead and say that the Patrick Mahomes era, or at least the current iteration of it in Kansas City, has likely met its match. Isn't this the second or third time we've done this this year with the Lions, right? Like it's, it, it does feel like It's that. happened a couple of times where they come off a game that you're like, what was that? They turn around the next week and they go back to putting 42 back up and all of a sudden Dan Campbell's back to talking about biting people's kneecaps and we all want to buy in and then they turn around and they lose to Green Bay for no reason at all. I don't know, Green Bay's kind of been turned around a little bit the last few weeks, but not where we thought Detroit was. Uh, yes, the answer is yes. I watched the game last week for the Lions and I thought, okay, Okay, that's a team that can compete. At the end of the day, I don't think it matters because, again, I don't think anybody can beat San Francisco as long as Debo and Christian McCaffrey both stay healthy. Uh, but if anybody's going to, it felt like offensively that Detroit Lions team from last week would be the team that could do it. But, again, I'm not going to trust them until they string three or four or five of those together. Not close wins. I'm talking wins that you go, that's a playoff team. That's a Super Bowl team right now because I can't have those Green Bay losses on the road and go, that's a team that's championship ready. Yeah, they're going to win the division. They're going to get a home game. That's great. But if that team that played at Green Bay goes to San Francisco in the NFC championship game, they can't survive. So, yes, I think I, I, I did feel much better. I will feel comfortable if they do it the next two weeks in a row and close out the season with momentum as opposed to this herky-jerky start-stop-go-stop-go-stop thing they've been doing for the past few weeks.